Coming up on the 10 o'clock news, lawmakers in the nation's capital scramble to hammer out a budget and put the federal government back in business before the close of the Columbus Day weekend. AIDS activists continue to act up inside an abandoned Mount Airy nursing home. Bill Wine reviews Sean Penn's latest film, State of Grace. It's a gangster film inspired by a deadly Manhattan gang. Good evening, I'm Cynthia Steele. And I'm Rich Noonan. Join us tonight at 10 plus Expanded Sports Sunday with Carl Cherkin. See you then. Coming up on the 10 o'clock news, optimism tonight on Capitol Hill over the possibility of a new federal budget. Former Klansman David Duke concedes defeat in his bid to become a U.S. Senator. Day two of the shuttle Discovery's voyage is another triumph for NASA and Sean Penn stars as an Irish mobster. We'll have a review of State of Grace. And on the Expanded Sports Sunday, Carl Churkin wraps up today's NFL action. We'll have a live report from the Flyers' home opener. Before the first Lexus ever saw the light of day, it saw the light of countless days. As part of our anti-aging program, surfaces were blasted as if by the sun, just so we could see what materials would best resist fading and cracking. Because any car can be new today, we want to be new tomorrow. Death in the royal family. The funeral of Princess Caroline's husband. A special report on location in Monaco on hard copy. Monday at 7.30 on Fox 29. Monty Capaletti has typical mother-in-law problems. You're an ecological menace. Yeah, well, you were the inspiration for twin beds. Until she leaves him $10 million if he cleans up his act. No alcohol. Oh, is that going for beer, too? Now he's cracking up. Rose. Rose. Hey, yo, whoa, what are you doing? Rodney Dangerfield and Joe Pesky are looking for some easy money. Wednesday at 8 on WTXF, Fox 29. And now, the Delaware Valley's only primetime newscast. Fox 29's The 10 O'Clock News. Good evening, I'm Cynthia Steele. And I'm Rich Noonan. Here's what's happening. Still no budget. After another day of backroom dealing and marathon bargaining, the Congress has failed to come up with an agreement. Today, much of the negotiating was done behind closed office doors. We get more now from Tom Hendrick, who joins us live from Capitol Hill. Tom? Uh, from what I was hearing later, it looked like uh, things are like, well, I'm obviously afraid. we're yeah, ha I'm having afraid. a little technical problem with that report. We'll move on. We'll try to get back to it if we can. Well, while all the wrangling continues in Washington, the impact of the budget battle is being felt here at home. For the second day in a row, Philadelphia's historic sites have been closed to tourists. The National Park Service uh, says more than 10,000 people would have come to see the Liberty Bell alone this weekend. Instead, visitors were on the outside looking in, and so were the federal employees who work at historic sites. All Park Service employees will report to work tomorrow, but will be sent home if there is no budget agreement. Vice President uh, Dan Quayle says the current fiasco in the nation's capital may have helped Republican David Duke to pick up 44% of the vote in Louisiana's senatorial election. Duke, a former Klansman, conceded defeat today to incumbent Democratic Senator Jay Bennett Johnston. Quayle says the 600,000 votes who, voters who cast ballots for Duke were sending a message to Washington. I believe, unfortunately, what a David Duke was able to do is to tap into the anti-incumbency incumbency and the cynicism that is out uh, in the Louisiana and around the country. Uh, the people of Louisiana are not racist. So that is past history. But the people of Louisiana, as people around the country, are fed up with what they see uh, going on in Washington, D.C. Unfortunately, David Duke was able to capitalize on that. Duke was threatening to file a lawsuit over absentee ballots that were cast but not counted for state. Senator Ben Baggert. Baggert was the official Republican nominee, but dropped out of Saturday's primary, throwing his support to the Democrats. Rich? As we told you, Tom Hendrick is standing by live on Capitol Hill for more on the budget. Back to you, Tom. Well, it may sound like a broken record, but no budget, no deal, and no money to run the federal government after tomorrow. But there is one thing. There is a plan, a plan that some say will uh, literally pass the buck. But I think there is a general view that some of the most uh, difficult 
problems with the uh, uh, conference report that was considered on Thursday night will be alleviated. What that means in plain English is that under the new plan, it's left up to congressional committees to come up with specifics on deficit reduction. The draft circulated earlier reduces by some $10 billion the amount that Medicare would contribute to deficit reduction over the next five years. Some Republicans who balked at the original Medicare proposal Friday were attracted to this plan, although it gave Democrats increased leverage because of their control of committees. The plan also calls for $10 billion less from taxes. President Bush was said to still be opposed to any kind of final deal that would increase income tax rates for the wealthy. The increase in income tax rates that a lot of people are trying to press on the system as, as the cost of doing this is uh, as, uh, as much a piece of broccoli as anything else has been. And I think the president feels he's eaten enough broccoli. Some fear raising income taxes for the rich eventually would include the middle class too. But Democratic leaders said, not so. That would only occur, and I emphasize only occur, if at all, on the highest income levels in the country, roughly people making over $200,000 a year. Well, and in the last couple of hours, whatever bipartisan cooperation there may have been over the last few days seems to have uh, deteriorated, to say the least. Uh, the House has been uh, filled with... Uh, uh, a lot of people making statements, many people are angry, and there's a lot of finger pointing going on here. As uh, one person uh, put it, he said, uh, everyone wants to take the credit for a good agreement, but no one wants to take the blame. Back to you. All right, Tom, how optimistic are they on Capitol Hill, and you've been there all day, that something's going to be worked out here before it's time to go back to work for two million federal employees on Tuesday? Well, maybe they'll have a longer than one day holiday. Uh, from all appearances right now, uh, it's going to be very difficult getting a, a, a deal that will be acceptable to both houses of Congress and the president uh, by the end uh, of tomorrow night at midnight. All right, thank you very much. That's okay. tough. Tom Henry. A long night ahead. Closer to home, another candidate is fighting to beat out an incumbent. Barbara Hay for the Republican candidate for governor was in Center City tonight for a campaign fundraiser. About 75 people paid $250 apiece to attend the cocktail party and helped fund Hafer's campaign. Hafer may need more help than that, however. A recent report shows that Hafer has about $151,000 in her campaign coffers, far short of Governor Casey's $3 million re-election campaign fund. Another battle in the war over abortion was fought today. The front line, Collingswood, New Jersey. Anti-abortion activists formed what they call a life chain. Demonstrators joined hands praying for an end to abortion. At the same time, a group of pro-choice activists held a counter-demonstration. Well, the topic was housing in Delaware County this afternoon. More than 100 activists for the homeless gathered at the courthouse demanding better low-income housing opportunities. Nationally known activist Carol Finelli, a longtime companion of the late Mitch Snyder, told the group homelessness is an American disgrace. The rally was one of 115 in 45 states today. It's day three of a peaceful takeover of a former nursing home in Mount Airy. As Dan Fiorucci reports, a group of protesters want the old Arden Hall nursing home used to care for AIDS patients. <laughs> According to these peaceful protesters, there's no adequate place in Philadelphia to care for AIDS patients who need sort of in-between care. People who are too sick to care for themselves at home, but who aren't sick enough to require expensive hospitalization. Hospital costs can be anywhere from $500 to $2,000 a day for somebody with really intensive care. Uh, the talk would be under $200 a day. That's why this group is occupying the old Arden Hall nursing home. They want to see it used as a residence to take care of up to 40 AIDS patients at a time. A facility like this, which is entirely equipped at this point, is a desperate need in Philadelphia. There is no other place now for people with AIDS to go. But not everyone in this community supports the concept of using the old nursing home for AIDS treatment. Some neighbors are worried. This is a, a drug free community. We don't have people on the corners in this section of West Mount Airy selling drugs. It's a family neighborhood and we want to keep it that way. Introducing uh, people uh, who got AIDS by intravenous drug abuse uh, is not appropriate in a, in a residential community. I think what he's really doing is raising the specter of people who are not white coming into the neighborhood. I think there's a racial taint to this. Um, it's not a valid issue. Protesters say $2 million have been spent making this facility appropriate for AIDS patients. 
and those protesters insist fighting AIDS is the purpose for which it should be used. In West Mount Airy, Dan Fiorucci, the 10 o'clock news. Tonight, another school strike has hit the Delaware Valley. Teachers in Delaware County Southeast School District say they'll be on the picket line tomorrow morning. The teachers have been working without a contract since the school year began five weeks ago. The strike will affect about 3,500 students. Coming up on the 10 o'clock news, word of possible freedom for Beirut hostage Terry Waite. And Israel starts the biggest gas mask giveaway since World War II. This new coupe is sporty, refined, stylish, responsive, and a lot of fun. In fact, you'll find this new coupe so much fun, you may never look at Hyundai quite the same way again. Introducing the new scoop from Hyundai. Yes, Hyundai. The unintelligent way. Bruce, I need this claim done now. Well, here's the policy data. The photos are in here, and the rest comes from the local office. Thanks a lot. The intelligent way. Bruce, I need this claim done now. Well, here's the policy data. Photos are in here, and the rest comes from the local office. Thanks a lot. For image processing and systems and network integration, call Bell Atlantic. thirst for something different, something beyond the ordinary. For them, there is a beer that refreshes like no other, Michelob Dry. Once you've experienced its bold taste with no aftertaste, there's no going back. Feel the power of the Warrior when the World Wrestling Federation returns live to the Philadelphia Spectrum Saturday, October 20th at 8 p.m. The Ultimate Warrior teams with the Legion of Doom in an elimination match against Demolition. Two title matches as well. Heart Foundation defend the tag team belts against Rhythm and Blues and the Texas Tornado defends the Intercontinental title against Mr. Perfect. Tickets on sale at the box office at all Ticketmaster locations. The WWF October 20th at the Spectrum. The largest giveaway of gas masks since World War II started in Israel today. The army is handing them out at local schools where troops show villages how to put them on and how to interject, inject themselves with antidotes to poison gas. Israel says the nationwide mask giveaway was planned even before Iraq invaded Kuwait. The Iraqis who have repeatedly threatened to use chemical weapons against Israel say the Israeli decision mounts to offensive action against Iraq. In the Persian Gulf, diplomatic meetings continue. The Japanese Prime Minister ended two days of talks with Saudi Arabian King Fahd. Fahd urged the Japanese to give economic aid to those countries most hurt by the worldwide trade embargo against Iraq. Many of Iraq's former principal trading partners have fragile economies, which have suffered during the two-month boycott. A Lebanese newspaper says British hostage Terry Waite may be released in a few days. The report, which could not be confirmed, says an Iranian official is in Beirut to obtain Waite's freedom. The envoy for the Anglican Church was kidnapped nearly four years ago. He is believed to be held captive by pro-Iranian Shiite Muslims. Well, there has been speculation recently about the release of British hostages because Britain and Iran have restored diplomatic relations. NASA says the space shuttle discovery continues on a successful mission after yesterday's launch of the solar probe Ulysses. Today began with a special serenade for the crew. The wake-up song from Mission Control in Houston was sung by the Boeing Aerospace Employees Choir. After waking up, the astronauts conducted a number of experiments, such as starting a small fire to study the spread of flames in space. The shuttle sent back some spectacular pictures of the planet Earth, as you see there. Discovery is scheduled to touch down at California's Edwards Air Force Base Wednesday. In South Jersey today, the town of Haddonfield broke a long-standing tradition. This Sunday, the shops are open for business, all part of a celebration for a new roadway through the shopping district. Maurice Brown has that story. <laughs> Haddonfield Township had a parade today. They breathed new life into downtown businesses that were all but shut down for road repairs during the summer.
there were the traditional bands, speeches by dignitaries, even a mile race with hundreds of dollars for the winner. But what made this day extra special is that they opened stores for business and in doing so set aside a law that has kept stores closed on Sunday since anyone can remember. Blue laws have been in effect at least since the 50s. I don't remember them not being in effect. Last year was the first time in 27 years stores were allowed to open on Sunday and only during the Christmas season. And what do shoppers and shop operators think about opening on Sunday year-round? Well, it depends on who you ask. I think it's put good for the merchant and the shopper, to be perfectly honest. I mean, I think the blue laws are antiquated. I think it's a bunch of baloney. We love to be open every Sunday. Um, We'd attract more of our families that work every day during the week. Do you think uh, the store should be open on Sunday? No. No. Why? This is fun, but no. Why? Because I think there's enough time during the week to get your shopping done. Shops will again be closed next Sunday until the Christmas season, when they hope to catch up on lost business. But at least for today, all agreed this was a great way to get together for shopping and fun. Real happy to be here. Happy to see the business on the highway again. In Haddonfield Township, Maurice Brown, the 10 o'clock news. Coming up, our Sunday Spotlight will look at difficulty facing Germany as it comes together after four decades. And Consumer Reports takes sports cars for a spin. We'll tell you what's hot. Plus a review of State of Grace, the story of Irish mobsters trying to escape Hell's Kitchen. Every night I put my body on the line. Now it's your turn. We're going for it. Are you? Then call right now. Tire prices are falling at Firestone. Save $28 to $72 in a set of four FR721 all-season radials. Drop in now during Firestone's big fall season sale. This is where the legend began. In places like Aspen, Sun Valley, and Taos. When people came for the snow and discovered the beer made with pure Rocky Mountain spring water. A beer you couldn't get most places. So they took some home and the legend started to grow. Today, people are thirsty for a lighter, more refreshing premium beer. Funny how the one they're looking for is the one that's been there all along. Original Coors, the Rocky Mountain legend. If you think it's just the yellow pages, hold on to your seat. It can show you where to get some culture. Or a great seat at the game. Or to find a suitable bargain. Thank you. Or just get away from it all. So if they say it's just the Yellow Pages, don't sit still for it. The genuine Bella Pennsylvania Yellow Pages. Nor the book and match it. A Bell Atlantic company. Well, we're in the hubbub of it all. I mean, this is where people shop, this is where they do business, and this is where they use their Mac card, too. You're tallying up the groceries here. Do you think she'll pay with a Mac card, or is it too early to tell? It's really too early to tell. We'll see what happens. It should be pretty convenient. I mean, it's much more handy than cash. I love the convenience of not having to write the check and just using the card. Do you have an application? Well, as a matter of fact, <laughs> I do. Thank you. You are. Yeah. That's great. It's very exciting. She is going to be paying with a Mac card. About, sorry about that. It's the Total Luxury Resort. Cows are stolen from other hotels. Robin Williams and Rick Moranis star in Club Paradise, Tuesday at 8 on Fox 29. Today would have been a national holiday in East Germany. The former communist country was founded 41 years ago. In tonight's Sunday Spotlight, Lee McCarthy takes a look at the problems that lie ahead for the United Germany. Last week's unification celebration in Berlin expressed the will and joy of the great majority of the German people. Fully 90% were in favor of East and West Germany again becoming one nation. A small leftist minority violently expressed its opposition to unification last week, but there is also a nonviolent, concerned minority which thinks unification may have been a bad idea. Lilo Klug belongs to the Green Party, which opposed unification in West Germany. It's all happening so fast, it's rather chaotic, and nobody knows really how to deal with it. There are no examples in history how to transform this economy into a functioning capitalist economy. The union became inevitable last March when East Germany held its first free elections. The newly formed Christian Democrats, organized by West German Chancellor Helmut Kohl, won a big victory. 
But Klug says that in the new Germany, the people who brought down the East German government have been left out of the political process. And the grassroots groups who had started the whole process, uh, they had no financial background, no organization. And the new conservative party, the uh, Christian Democrats and the Social Democrats in East Germany, they got their whole infrastructure from pencils to fax machines and know-how from the West. Klug says that Kohl was caught up in what she calls the national drunkenness of unification and ignored its problems. Even though they now have a common currency, former East Germans are finding that they can't afford to buy Western goods. They may be in danger of becoming second-class Germans. Former East Germany will stay for quite a long time, I'm afraid, the cheap labor area of West Germany. And if wages are too low, People will move to the West. If they go up, uh, Western corporations won't move in. They will go to Poland, to other countries which are cheaper. And like these former bureaucrats in the West German government, many citizens of the new Germany now have no jobs. Unemployment is expected to be between 40 and 50 percent. So many East Germans and other Eastern Europeans continue to flock into what was West Germany in search of jobs or higher pay, just better lives. To survive, the new Germany must overcome severe social and economic problems, and they have just begun. Lee McCarthy, The 10 O'Clock News. The demand for high-performance cars that are comfortable is increasing in the automobile industry. Tonight in Consumer Reports, Jill Chernikoff tells us about the road performance of three new sports cars that are getting rave reviews in the auto world. These are the cars that dreams are made of. The Toyota MR2, Celica and Mazda's MX-6 are racy little cars with big tires, bigger engines, and lots of oomph. But they do carry hefty price tags between $15,000 and $20,000. For the money, you'd expect cars like these to handle the road expertly. And in Consumer Reports tests, they did. The Toyota MR2 even set a new speed record on runs through the emergency handling course. The two-seater's slick shifting and quick acceleration made it the sportiest of the three. But there are trade-offs to the sportiness. Cramped space and a tiny trunk. The all-new Toyota Celica successfully combined sporty performance and handling with passenger car comfort. Like its cousin, the MR2, the Celica has easy-to-use controls and easy-to-read displays. If you decide to go with a Celica, Consumer Reports recommends the less expensive GT over the GTS version. The extra $3,000 just buys you styling vanities like flared fenders and a rear spoiler. How did the Mazda MX-6 compare? It wasn't as fun to drive as the Toyota's, but it handled the road just as well. And its seating is more comfortable and its back seat more spacious. Consumer Reports advises the Mazda doesn't really need a turbo engine to perform well. So look for the less expensive DX or LX models. Jill Chernikoff, The 10 O'Clock News. If you'd like more information about tonight's report, send a self-addressed stamped envelope to Consumer Reports in care of WTXF-TV, 330 Market Street in Philadelphia, and that's 19106. The good guys and bad guys are a staple in the movies, but this fall has seen a run on really bad guys, gangsters. Bill Wine takes a look at a mobster movie starring Sean Penn. It's called State of Grace. Thank you, Rich. If organized crime didn't exist, Hollywood would have to invent it. It's here to stay for the rest of the year. The third gangster movie of the fall season, State of Grace, is as tough-talking, hard-drinking, and violent as its characters. But it succeeds on its own terms thanks to its passion, a feel for the material, a fascinating script, and four fine performances. State of Grace examines the Westies, the Irish mafia that ruled the New York neighborhood known as Hell's Kitchen. When the neighborhood gets yuppified, the Westies attempt an alliance with Italian mobsters. That's when an Irish kid named Terry Noonan, I don't know where they dug that name up, played by Sean Penn, returns to the old neighborhood. Terry gets a warm reception from his childhood best friend Jackie, now an Irish gangster, but mixed signals from Jackie's sister Kathleen, whom Terry once loved but left behind. Yeah, he just appeared. It's like Ainge was flying by, so they dropped him off. What? What do you mean, what? Well, you get this look. What's this look? I'm trying to remember how I feel about you. Yeah, right. I think I'm pissed. 
So are some of the neighbors, including Burgess Meredith, when they hear that Terry is working with the violent Flannery brothers. Just played cards with your dad, and he showed me pictures of you all the time. Lord God, if he had lived to see that you was working for the Flatteries, you know, he'd have whipped your ass. Frankie Flannery, Jackie's older brother, is now the boss of the mob and of his brother. They think they can come into our neighborhood and do this to us, Frankie. I know, I know that, Jack. Yeah, I got no respect for it. Just think of what we said has got a roll. Yes, but first we're going to show some maturity. Can you show me some f***ing discipline and maturity? I'm talking about the neighborhood. Oh, I am your boss. Morelli says nobody gets hit. We don't have his permission. And Kathleen is sick to death of death. You're acting surprised, Jackie? Are you serious? You want to think it surprises you? Every time you turn around down here, somebody else is dead. What are you talking about? How many weeks we go to his kid just because somebody forgot to pay back money? State of Grace is an involving, visceral experience. One's the, one that blends its suspense and its surprises in unexpected ways, gliding past the bumpy, stylized flourishes with good writing and even better acting. Sean Penn is superb in a flawlessly understated lead performance as a friend and lover being pulled in conflicting directions. And he's backed up beautifully by the trio of supporting actors you just saw playing the Flannery siblings. Gary Oldman is the volatile alcoholic Jackie, Ed Harris is the cold-blooded suburbanite gang boss, and Robin Wright is a woman desperate to escape the heat of Hell's Kitchen. Three and a half stars out of four for State of Grace, an absolute clinic of great film acting in an intense, ferocious Irish tragedy. The audience should know that this is a, a violent, and profane R-rated film, but it's got to have both, and it's a terrific movie, one of the best. Looks powerful. Sean is. Penn is a good actor. Another superb performance from him. Terry Noonan. Thanks. Where'd I hear that name before? <laughs> <laughs> Still ahead, Bill Elias says we're in for a change of weather, and in sports we'll meet a man whose comeback is a triumph of spirit. Hard copy special report. Direct from Monaco, a death in the royal family. Last week, Princess Caroline's husband died in a tragic speedboat accident off the French Riviera. We'll have complete coverage as Terry Murphy joins the royal family and citizens of Monaco at his funeral in Europe. Did his jet set lifestyle lead to his death? And why his tragedy struck the celebrated family so many times? The story behind the headlines on location in Monaco on Hard Copy. Monday at 7.30 on Fox 29. This is a test. For the next 60 seconds, we will conduct an actual test. Independent surveys have shown that most consumers use a gas treatment or dry gas for hesitation, hard starting, or poor engine performance, which can be directly related to moisture or water in your fuel tank. These beakers of fuel will simulate your fuel tank. To each, we've added water. In the first two, we're adding the leading gas treatment and dry gas. Within seconds, they form a milky substance which settles to the bottom of your fuel tank and may not pass through your engine. We see that water and fuel don't mix. Until now, Formula X2 is added to the third beaker. Almost instantly, the water, fuel, and Formula X2 mix, creating a permanent crystal clear fuel. Here's what all three could look like in your fuel tank. Formula X2 has removed all the water and will continue to clean carburetors, fuel injectors, and your entire fuel system as it runs smoothly through your engine. This concludes the test. Formula X2, for trouble-free driving year-round. Available at Pep Boys. Get the cure. <clears throat> to advertise Roy Rogers' new big steak and cheese, we've asked Mr. Carlos from Melody World to compose a jingle. Mr. Carlos? Hi, Mr. Get Your Fill! Big steak and cheese with onions! It needs more energy. It's back, Roy's Big Steak and Cheese. Well, the weather this weekend was unbelievable. It's beautiful. Could you have asked for a better weekend? No, you all couldn't. in all. And you know, unfortunately, it, <laughs> it's just about over with. We may squeak out a little bit of a, a little bit more, maybe a half a day of another nice warm day. But for October, who's complaining? Temperatures, middle 80s. Lots of sunshine, but as you see the forecast in a few minutes, it is coming to an end. Today, 85 degrees, 310 this afternoon at 6.01 this morning. It got down to 57, way above the normals of 70 and 50. There you have your records and your sunrise and sunset times. And right now, still pretty comfortable, 68 degrees, humidity high at 94%. Southerly winds at 3 miles an hour and the pressure steady at 30.12. Temperatures this morning, though, 
pretty chilly, especially once you get around Redding, getting down to about 48 degrees this morning. That was the cool spot, or Allentown, I should say. Redding got down to 52. Southern New Jersey, though, did not cool down much at all. 62 in Millville, and those afternoon high temperatures were absolutely gorgeous. Second day in a row that the Northeast had the hot spot in the area. 86 degrees there, but 81 in New Hope. Wrightstown getting up to 84 degrees. And Atlantic City tied their record high today with 83, but that's the Pomona reading. If you're along the shore, had that marine layer of fog and haze keeping temperatures down to about 70, 72 degrees this afternoon. But as you moved in about two or three miles, skies were clear and temperatures were very, very nice. Now, right now, it's still 68 in the northeast. Wrightstown with 69 degrees. Atlantic City in Pomona coming in with 68. Westchester, 64 degrees. And outside, we have clouds moving in from the west. Very, very slowly, though, we still have some clear skies there, eastern Pennsylvania and much of New Jersey. This front is a stationary front, which does not mean that it's stationary. It means that it's moving at speeds of less than 20 miles an hour, and it is going to take its time moving to the east. And as it does, it's going to increase our clouds and our chances for rain for Monday night, Tuesday, and for Wednesday. I think the heaviest chance for rain is going to be for Tuesday night into Wednesday. As a matter of fact, about four inches of rain has fallen throughout sections of Arkansas. Record-setting heat, though, ahead of the front. Uh, Charleston, South uh, Columbia, Charleston, South Carolina, rather, 91 degrees, tied the record high today. Cape Hatteras had a high temperature of 86 degrees, but behind the front, snowy weather and record cold temperatures. That's not going to be in our forecast, but we could see about another five to eight inches of snow throughout the mountainous regions of Colorado and Wyoming. By tomorrow, it's going to be wet to our north and to our west. We could see a sprinkle by later tomorrow. I still think we'll see some sun, but a few more clouds than we have been seeing. But our forecast for tonight does not look all that bad. Partly to mostly cloudy, fog and haze, 58 to 62 degrees. Now for tomorrow, look for a day that's also partly to mostly cloudy. I think we'll.